The Titans have made their first move at inside linebacker, signing Kenneth Murray, formerly of the Chargers. Is this a good signing? We're gonna dive into what this means for the Titans defense. This is the Music City Audible. Let's get to it. Oh, welcome everyone to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast, our fourth episode in the last two days. The podcast is presented by Broadway Sports Media and 440 Sports. I'm Justin Graver. With me, as always, is Justin Mello. And yes, today we're diving into the newest Titans signing, linebacker Kenneth Murray. A reminder, this episode is brought to you by Sinker's Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Justin, let's get to this signing. Kenneth Murray, this is the first, I'll call it questionable. This is the first questionable sign. I mean, Tony Pollard was kind of questionable to be yeah, a running Yeah, it's not back. the first questionable, yeah, it's money, the second. This is the most questionable of the yeah. Titans' four free agent signings so far. What can you tell us about Kenneth Murray? I don't like it. Mm. Um, I've, I followed his career pretty closely since he Me was a too. first round pick out of Oklahoma and it, it hasn't been very good. You know, I, I think he was a bit of one of those tests. <laughs> yeah, I see you throwing up the horns. I think he was one of those um, sort of testing prospects for me. When I say that, I probably could have put it better, but um, you know, I really liked him on tape coming out. He was so athletic, sideline to sideline, rangy. What I mean when I say testing is, you know, at the time, he wasn't the biggest guy coming out of, I think he was like 220, 225 at the time coming out of college. So you worried about his ability to get off blocks and all of the issues that, you know, sort of raised red flags then have uh, become even bigger issues at the pro level. He does not get off blocks well at all. And I think the Chargers know that, especially in the run game. And I'm going to give you some proof of, of them knowing that, okay? In 2021, they fielded the third worst run defense in the NFL. They allowed 139 rushing yards per game. Okay. That's look, that's on everyone, especially on the front seven. Kenneth Murray's not alone in the front seven, but as we know, those linebackers, you want them to be able to come downhill. You want them to be able to get after uh, the run game. He doesn't do that well at all. They struggled so badly in that area. They knew it. Why do they know it? They went into the off season they essentially signed two nose tackles, okay? They added Sebastian Joseph Day from the Los Angeles Rams and a familiar face to Titans fans, Austin Johnson, right, who used to play for the Titans, I think was yeah. with the Giants at the time. Um, they got even worse <laughs> despite doing that in 2022. Okay, they were the fifth worst run defense in the league as opposed to the third, but they actually allowed about eight more running yards per game, which is astounding. They were at like 145 per game. And it's always been a huge problem area of his game. It's always been a problem. And the, you know what bothers me? It's not the only problem in his game. It's not just about getting off blocks. He doesn't read well. He doesn't process well. That's why he's such a liability in the run game. But the, the I think the most frustrating part of his game to me is coverage. Yeah. Okay? Because yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. super athletic, right? He's, he's supposed to be rangy, sideline to sideline. He's got – I spoke to people – um, uh, friends this morning who cover that team nationally and know them really well. I had three guys dive into my DMs before I said anything, said, wow, how much money did you guys give Kenneth Murray? That actually happened to me this morning. I had three guys who know the team really well. A couple of them have been on this pod, I think, official podcast, like just crazy. And uh, I asked one of them, who I, I really respect his opinion on football in general, and I asked him, um, why isn't he better in coverage, considering <laughs> he's so athletic? I just flat out asked. And he said, to be totally blunt with you, there is zero feel and zero instincts for the passing game. And it shows up on tape. And it shows up in the run game, too, with misdirection. He's a, he's a bad pre-snap and post-snap processor. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I know I'm laying it on thick, but... I mean, uh, the PFF grades aren't end-all, be-all, but they do kind of paint a story here. They are atrocious. Perhaps you'll get into them. Yeah. Just uh, I'm not a fan of this signing at all. I've got other concerns that I want to get into, but I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, if you're a Titans fan who's active on Twitter and you were up and awake when this signing was reported late last night or you saw maybe this— or maybe you saw this morning, uh, people started retweeting and posting c clips of Kyler Murray just— or sorry, Kenneth Murray— uh, just getting totally abused in in the passing game and just being completely unaware. There's one clip that was circulating where he identifies a mesh concept pre-snap, right? Mesh concept meaning two outside receivers 
run across each other. And oftentimes with a mesh concept, you'll have a sit route in the middle to sort of distract or pull coverage away from that mesh. And he's sitting there pre-snap, pointing out the mesh, pointing out the mesh. He's like, they're going to cross. They're gonna, This guy, this guy, they're going to cross. They're going to cross. The play happens. The mesh happens right in front of him. He's passing players to another, but the sit route happens right behind him. And he's completely oblivious to this fact. And the ball goes right over his shoulder for a completion. And it's like, I just, it's just funny like that he did recognize the pre-snap play and then still did nothing to try to stop it. So there's been lots of bad Kenneth Murray clips circulating around Twitter. Uh, For my thoughts, Justin, I'm going to play a clip actually from our free agency preview pod last week. So just, just take a quick listen to this. Or if you're watching on YouTube, take a quick look at this little clip from last week. I don't even know what you're about to play. (laughs) This is my thoughts on Kenneth Murray. Oh, Kenneth Murray coming out of the Chargers never really lived up to the hype. I think I'm out on him, but he's he's a name that people might recognize. <laughs> um, yeah, now so you got to be in. You're forced we, to be in. On that Kenneth was uh, Murray. that was us just running through a list of remaining free agent linebackers that we hadn't talked about yet, and I got to Kenneth Murray, and that those were my thoughts. So yeah, um, this is definitely an interesting signing for the Titans. Look, he profiles as an elite special teamer with that athleticism and the lack Not of recognition. Not paying him to play to... special teams, <laughs> eight million a year, whatever it is. Yeah. $7 oh, so a we year. didn't we didn't talk about the contract. So it's two years, fifteen and a half million dollar contract could be worth up to eighteen million dollars. You may have seen that two years, eighteen million reported, but it's really fifteen and a half million. So it's a, a hefty contract. I mean, it's a decent contract. Aziz Alshire got around eleven million a year. Obviously, a better, more productive, more proven player got paid a little bit more. I mean, not a lot more, which kind of makes you scratch your head too about the signing. That this is yeah. definitely something where we got to wait and see what else they do because if it's Kenneth Murray next to Jack Gibbons or Otis Reese next year, I think your defense is going to have a hard time stopping people, especially in the run game. But also, you, you mentioned the coverage thing. Like, can Kenneth Murray even play on third downs? And he's a, a smaller... Jack Gibbons can't. So. He's a, a smaller, slider guy. It's not like he's one of those thumpers that can't play on third down because he's a downhill player who doesn't play in the passing game. He just is so not good in coverage. <laughs> I will say, if you're looking for positives, because this has been like, if you're if we're trying to hype Titans fans up here for uh, for their newest signing, job. we're doing a horrible job. There is some positives to his play. He he is a good pass rusher, especially like a third down blitzer. Blitz, yeah. He's a guy that you can use all across, like send from good anywhere speed. in the off the line of scrimmage. Has yeah, has great closing speed. He had a career high three sacks last year. Um, there are some things that you can look at and say, okay. I see a little bit of the vision. His RAS, relative athletic score, coming out of Oklahoma was off the charts, 9.88, absolutely elite explosion, speed, grade. Um, um, Like we mentioned, on the smaller side, so not a great uh, size grade, but elite explosion, elite speed, truly an elite athlete. Remember the running back Chris Henry or whatever his name was, Titans took it that had an elite relative athletic score? Sure, sure. Yeah, I wonder if this is the linebacker version of him, right? <laughs> Chris Henry did not know how to play football, and that was the bigger problem. Um, yeah. I'll tell you, I, another thing I want to get into, I'm concerned about this team's ability to, to stop the pass next season. Certainly, we're waiting for more moves at inside linebacker. We're waiting for more moves at cornerback. Until then, it's not a complete picture, and I guess you can say the same is true about what I'm about to say. But right now, as of... Mid-afternoon, March 12th, I'm really, really concerned about this team's ability to stop the run. And that's something I don't think every fan is sort of awake to right now. Okay, They don't have a run-stopping D-lineman to play next to Jeffrey Simmons. Okay, I don't care what you say about T.R. Tart. His attitude was unfortunate. They missed him when they lost him down the stretch. The numbers show that. And they've got to get better at that position now. They don't have anyone right now, not one. Then you add a guy like this that's been such a nightmare in the run game, I'm really worried. In fact, a signing like this makes me believe even more. We talked about this on one of the three episodes yesterday, quickly, how there was like reported interest in DJ Reader. DJ Reader is an elite run stopper, an elite clog gapper, interior big-bodied guy up the middle. Like, you need a guy like that when you've got Kenneth Murray behind him, right? Because... Those linemen, I mean, like, look, all linebackers, it puts them in a tough spot. But when linemen get a chance to climb to the second level and get on Kenneth Murray, it's over. Like, that rep is one, right? So you need a guy in front of him, like a DJ reader, that can prevent that from happening. So we'll see if that's another domino that falls here. 
Uh, because as of right now, I don't think we're paying, Titans fans are paying enough attention to how bad this run defense is as currently constructed because there is nobody next to Jeffrey Simmons that can do it. And losing Dina Kowatri hurts. Losing Azizel Shire hurts a lot. And replacing him with a guy that's been such a huge liability in the run game. This is not even an average run defense right now. It's a legitimately bad one. Yeah. No, okay, no, so. no doubt. But the question is, how much does it matter? Because you got Brian Callahan coordinating your offense now. You're going to score 50 points a game. Don't need to stop nobody. No, <laughs> um, I no, I totally agree. It's the biggest concern right now as we sit here in the you know early on day One two of, of free concerns, agency. To be honest, I think it's but... the, to me it's the biggest because you look at the other holes on the Titans roster. Like obviously they have weaknesses on the offensive line at the wide receiver position, but those are things that we expect them to attack during the draft. Fair. And that doesn't mean they're going to fix them. You know, like he could draft a right. guy early in the draft hoping he's going to fix your problem and the guy just doesn't get it you know and you know Isaiah Wilson was supposed to fix the tackle problem three years like four the, years ago Kenneth Murray is supposed to fix the Chargers linebacker problem yeah. four years ago so um yeah I mean those that's why I'm more that's why I'm most concerned here about is the run defense but I also wonder like what is this rebuild timeline? Because the Titans are probably not competing for a Super Bowl next year anyway. Do you give them some leniency on figuring out this side of the ball, you know, a, another year or so of offseason moves and draft picks when you know this year you're probably going to attack the offense really hard that yeah. maybe next year is the year where you shore up the defense and then you make a run for, you know, actually being a competitive Super Bowl level team. But that's not an excuse to not do anything. That's just, you know, sort of the right. realistic situation. That doesn't we're in. justify signing Kenneth Murray. <laughs> it doesn't justify. There were better so let's talk more about Kenneth Murray really quick. As you mentioned his PFF grades, I do want to get into it here. So I'm just going to read off some grades looking at different areas of his gain. Overall defense grade. He has never been above a 54.4, <sighs> which is below average for sure in the NFL when it comes to PFF grades. Last season, 52.9. The year before that, 47.8. 2021, which was by far his worst season and a season where he only played 11 games, 34.0, which is absolutely atrocious. And then 54.4 as a rookie. Now, there are a few random encouraging grades in here. Last year, he was a 68.2 tackling grade. That's the second highest of his career behind his uh, rookie season. And two years ago, 2022, he actually graded out pretty well in coverage, 74.2, which was is by far his highest PFF coverage grade since he entered the league. Now, what happened that year that made him so much better than the other three years when he was terrible? I'm not entirely sure. Um, but as we continue to talk about his coverage, I also want to point out the the yards and, and stuff that he's allowed. And this is his advanced stats on um, PF Pro Football Reference here. He has allowed, last season, he allowed a career high 10.5 yards per, per completion into his coverage. 7.5 yards per target into his coverage. He allowed 516 overall receiving yards, the most he's allowed in his career. 71% completion percentage into his coverage. Career highs across the board in a bad way in how how many yards, passer rating, things like, well, passer rating, not career high, but yards allowed, yards <laughs> per completion allowed, touchdowns allowed. He has been truly a liability, as you called him. So it'll be interesting to see how the Titans use him. And that, I think, is how we should wrap up, wrap up this little pod. How will the Titans use him? Are they going to use him in coverage? Are they going to make him sort of a blitzing specialist, pass rushing specialist when it comes to passing downs? Are they just going to take him off the field on third down? I think a lot of that will depend on who else they sign at the linebacker position, if anybody, and what kind of pieces they can put around Kenneth Murray. I also want to tell a quick story, Justin, before I let you uh, respond to that. So Absolutely. back in 2020, Kenneth Murray drafted into the NFL. Funny enough, the same year that Kyler Murray was drafted into the NFL. I go to Vegas before I'm working at the NFL. I'm still allowed, still allowed to bet on sports. I go to Vegas. I make <laughs> my preseason bets. One of my preseason bets that I really liked was Kyler Murray to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. So I go grab a betting sheet. I'm at the sports book. I grab the betting sheet. I'm scanning the list for Rookie of the Year odds, and I find K. Murray. It's got pretty good odds to win Rookie of the Year. I'm like, wow, Kyler Murray is not as favored as I thought he'd be to win Rookie of the Year. I'm definitely going to bet some money on this. Go up to the counter, read off the little number next to K. Murray's name, get my ticket printed, and it. you know what it says on it? It says, Kenneth Murray, Defensive Rookie of the Year. I'm like, <laughs> are you freaking kidding me? I accidentally bet on Kenneth Murray to win Defensive Rookie of the Year, trying to bet <laughs> on Kyler Murray to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, 
And Kenneth Murray did not win. He was not a finalist. He did not receive hardly any votes. He was nowhere nope. close to winning Defensive Rookie of the Year that season. So, hey, I threw away some money on Kenneth Murray. Is that what the Titans did? <laughs> Throw away some money on Kenneth Murray? I thought that's what you were about to say. I had a feeling. Um I, I don't have a ton to add. I think the PFF grades that you just went through, the advanced stats, they essentially sum up and are in line with everything I said before about his ability to get off blocks, his uh, difficulty processing both pre- and post-snap, uh, the lack of instincts and feel in the passing game that essentially nulls his athletic upside uh, <laughs> that should be there in coverage. So this is a confusing one to me. Hey, former first-round pick, some natural talent and abilities are obviously there. I think general manager Rand Carthon is very clearly banking on the fact that they'll be able to bring that out of him. No connections to the coaching staff really that I can identify, yeah. right? It's not like Denard Wilson has ever been with him or line or linebackers coach Ben Bloom. Um, it's, it's just one that doesn't make a lot of sense to us. And we're being honest about it. Yeah, right? I we're don't not going to sugarcoat it. came here to, for us to hype you up. Uh, it's the wrong show because we're going to be honest. This every is time the, they do something. This is the signing that we're not going to really spend time hyping up. But let's put a quick positive spin on this thing. Blake Bettingfield called this a, quote, good signing. Oh, no. Here's the full quote. Inconsistent player, but has three down ability as well as a blitzer. Good signing. Price is high but very few left on market to replace Aziz. Now, I'm not sure I agree with that last part. A, the Titans still need another linebacker because, again, this is... If if you're even counting Kenneth Murray as a starter... Um, you are. As a starting quality player, you still only have one. Uh, so that they definitely need another linebacker. And there are a few guys still out on the market. Not I'd a be lot. A, it's a bad group. Not a there ton, are, but... Two or three that might be able to help. I'd be a fan of Josie Jewell, Willie Gay... Titans reportedly are not in on Patrick Queen, but I'm, I'd am i still be in on Patrick Queen, although I don't know how well you put Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray as a pair. They, I don't think they fit well together because they're both a little bit undersized, extremely athletic, sideline-to-sideline guys who have struggled when they had to be the premier linebacker on their right. team. Pa- Patrick Queen took a, got a big boost once Roquan Smith joined the Ravens, right. but before that he was you know, not that good. He was kind of having the exact same problems Kenneth Murray was having, same kind of athletic profile, but not really the production to back it up. So I guess we'll see if the Titans staff thinks they can get the most out of him here and see if they can, if they feel they can put him in a better position to succeed than what the Chargers did, although I'm not exactly sure what that means for him. Somebody on on Twitter in my mentions when this signing was reported called him a project. I was like, a project is someone that you draft and try to develop. You don't sign a, f- a former four-year starter uh, to a two-year contract because he's a project. He's not a project. He's a former first-round bust. There is a difference between right. that. You're, you can't still be being labeled a project five years in, right? I right. think that's a problem, right? So they're counting on him to start. The contract says it is. They're not going to sign another two starting caliber inside linebackers when they've given him that kind of money. So... Uh, they're counting on him to start, right? That's all I'm going to say. Josie Jewell, like we're talking about an aging two down thumper. If I'm thinking of the right guy and yeah. I'm pretty sure I am. Uh, Willie Gay, I would, I would take a flyer on. He's a, he's another quote unquote project. If you will. I, again, if I'm remembering correctly, he's also a bit of a thumper, right? He's a bigger bodied guy coming out of the draft. I remember um, I, 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 that would probably pair well. I think yeah. Jerome Baker would intrigue me Jerome higher Baker's upside. An interesting guy I think for than sure. all of these guys that we just talked about. But um, if they're looking for, uh, I, I guess a, a a different a player with a different profile, I do think Josie Jewell and Willie Gay probably make some sense. And Bobby Wagner is a free agent as well. Is still on the market. Lots of connections between him and maybe uh, going to Dallas. But he is getting up there in age. But he had a really good year last year. Um, PFF had him at a 92.7 run defense grade last year. He's a guy that's interesting. Uh, Someone I'm not interested in is Devin White. I don't think Devin White is um, a very good player, and putting him and Kenneth Murray together could be an absolute disaster. Similar problems as a a processing pre and post snap. So, no, I don't like that one at all. Um, Oren Burks is another guy that's sort of a two-down player. Like, a lot of these guys left. Went to Vanderbilt. Yeah, local guy. A lot of the guys left on the market are local players. So anything else you want to say about this Kenneth Murray signing of the linebacker position? Because I do want to touch on one more thing while we're talking right now. 
No, I'm going to let you touch on what I think you're about to touch on. So as we were recording this podcast, Adam Schefter has announced Derek Henry is signing with the Baltimore Ravens a two-year deal, $16 million contract worth up to $20 million, $9 million fully guaranteed in the first year. So it is official. After many months of speculation, will Derrick Henry leave the Titans? Will he leave and join the Ravens? Will he follow in the footsteps of Steve McNair and Derek Mason and Samari Roll of guys who had the majority of their great careers in Nashville and then went to Baltimore at the end? Um, it happened, and that's exactly what he will do. He'll have a chance to win a Super Bowl there with Lamar Jackson in the backfield next to him. Could be one of the most potent run games in the NFL. The Ravens are usually up there. They've had trouble finding stability at the running back position. You got Derrick Henry with uh, Keaton Mitchell coming in to spell him. It could be a very potent backfield. I kind of like what Baltimore is doing. I hate the Ravens, but I think this signing makes a lot of sense for King Henry. And um, congrats to him for getting one more big payday. I mean, $9 million fully guaranteed for a running back over 30 years old is pretty impressive for him. And we'll see if he has success there. I know Titans fans will probably not root for him to have success, although some of you probably will if Marcus Mariota tells us any if his career story tells us anything Marcus Mariota also signed a contract today to be the commander's backup while I'm on a tangent um keeps playing yeah so good for Derrick Henry him. bad for Titans fans sad day end of an era a truly amazing incredible era of getting to watch a future hall of famer play at the peak of his game and I do think one day Derrick Henry will come back to Nashville He'll retire a Titan. When For he goes sure. into the Hall of Fame, it'll be in the two-tone blue. It will not be in a Ravens jersey or any other team's jersey. So we have that to look forward to, Titans fans. But for now, uh, you're going to be seeing him on the field in that purple and black next season. Um, I, I could go on and on, so I won't. But um, Hall of Fame career, in my opinion, don't care what anyone says. Best running back of, of this generation, certainly of these last five, six years, in my opinion, um, it's a shame he's going to fall like 500 yards short of setting the Titans all time record. I think we have like Mike Malarkey, Terry Robisky, and Matt LaFleur to blame for that. <laughs> and all honestly, cause maybe they could have used him a bit more throughout the early portion of his career. Yeah. Um, it's not time for this conversation right now, but I think a lot of Titans fans, first thing I noticed was $8 million per year. Same thing. Titans gave Tony Pollard. Yeah. Right. And it's a shorter term. It's two years instead of three. So it's less resources invested in what some of you describe as a non premium position. So I get it that like, it felt like for both sides, maybe the right time to split up. I, I get that. I'm not saying anything right now, but I think certainly it's very, very intriguing that the Titans give Tony Pollard the same amount of money per season. Right. I, am I wrong to say that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting because like, is Derrick Henry at age 30 still worth the same amount as a 26-year-old running back? Like, that seems like a lot of money. to Like, I'd rather give that same contract to a guy who's four or five years younger, objectively speaking. Now, for the Titans specifically, like the sentimental value of it, maybe you would rather have Derrick Henry back for two more years. But I think, you know, we talked about this a lot on the Tony Pollard podcast reaction that... They're moving a different direction. They're moving away from the heavy formations and the running into loaded boxes with a like predictable offense and saying, we're just going to be better than you with our predictable offense, so try to stop it. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more misdirection trying to attack defense's weaknesses, so I like the overall direction, which is why I'm not super bummed. I also think we've all talked ourselves into this idea that this was going to happen, so we've been accepting it slowly for a while now, and now that it's official, it doesn't. I don't feel like the Titans made a mistake signing Tony Pollard to a similar average annual value and not signing Derrick Henry to the same deal because a year from now, two years from now, like there is a pretty decent chance that Derrick Henry has a massive fall off and, or hits a wall. And maybe that's a gradual wall that he hits over the course of the next season. But by the time playoffs roll around, like, are you counting on a 30, almost 31 year old running back to carry the, the offensive load still? I don't think he'll have to carry it in Baltimore, but in Tennessee, that's kind of what you would have expected. So I think it makes sense for him. It makes sense for the Ravens. And it makes sense for the Titans that they didn't pursue a reunion. Fair. I'll, I'll leave with that. Uh, but I think every, uh, you know, I think Titans fans will compare Pollard to Henry this year. And I think that's fair yeah. in truth, right? And I mean, big, big shoes to fill and, and tough ones to step into. 
We'll see how it goes, but I don't want to derail it too much because uh, this was a Kenneth Murray episode, a very positive Kenneth Murray episode, <laughs> as you can tell. And we'll be back, who knows, later today, this evening. No idea when the Titans do something big. You guys have been great. Uh, the, the numbers on, on the three pods were outstanding yesterday for Pollard, uh, uh, Cushenberry, and uh, I mean, Awuzie got uploaded so late and we woke up this morning shocked that some of you are degenerates that were up at 2 a.m. watching that Awuzie video. I love it because yeah. uh, the numbers were really good on it considering the time it got uploaded. So we appreciate you guys. Appreciate Sinker's Beverage, our new sponsor. Uh, we're going to need some cold ones this uh, this season. Watching Kenneth Murray run in the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm going to be grabbing them at Sinker's Beverage to help me get me through those difficult moments. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, thank you uh, to everyone who's tuned in. Thanks to all our new listeners and all our new YouTube viewers who have found us. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Our subscriber count is growing. So get in on the action. Don't miss out. Hit that subscribe button, the Music City Audible. And yes, Justin, as you mentioned there, reminding everyone that this episode is brought to you by Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Check out Sinkers Beverages website and make sure to sign up for the in crowd. Gives you access to special allocations, insider deals, and it's the only way you can attend the 440 draft party. Details oh. on that coming soon. A live draft watch party uh, presented by 440 Media. So make sure you are signed up for the in crowd with Sinkers Beverages. And another thing, you know, a lot of people don't have time, don't have energy to go out and get your drinks. We live in a delivery Uber Eats Postmates filled world. Yeah. Well, guess what? Sinkers is on Uber Eats. Search Uber Eats for Ow. Sinkers. You can have all the booze you want delivered straight to your house. They have a huge wine and bourbon selection. And that, as you've mentioned a few times, the massive walk-in beer fridge. So thanks again to Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville for sponsoring this podcast. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. As Justin said, we will be back next time the Titans make a signing. So keep your eyes glued to your Twitter feed for those Ian Rappaport and Tom Pelissero and Adam Schefter and whoever else is reporting signings notification. Jordan Schultz is a big one. Um, keep your eyes open for those notifications. And when you see it, you know that we're coming soon. Subscribe, like I said, to the channel and turn on alerts so you get a notification when our next video drops. Because look, if you didn't have notifications on, you might have missed this Kenneth Murray video because he got signed so late last night. We were like, oh, let's just tape our reaction in the morning. So sorry for the delay on this one. But yes, pod is out now and, and we have reactions to Tony Pollard, Lloyd Cushenberry, Chidobe Awuzie. They're all up on the YouTube channel. They're all in the podcast audio feed. So go listen to those if you miss them. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. We'll be back soon. Until then, y'all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.